Tesla's Model 3 was recently named the safest car in the US. But what does that even mean? Specifically, what goes into determining a car's level of safety? Today on Bumper to Bumper, we're gonna take a look at how vehicles are crash tested, what kind of clever engineering goes into keeping you safe during a crash, and how the Tesla Model 3 blew away the competition. Buckle up, my science-loving pals. We're about to watch a whole lot of car crashes. Thank you to our friends at eBay Motors for sponsoring today's episode of Bumper to Bumper. You know, all of us here at Donut, we go through a lot of cars. Not a day goes by where one of us isn't like, I could probably sell my F-150 and get a Raptor. But it's just too much freaking work. Well now, thanks to eBay Motors, the search for cars and selling of cars has gotten so much easier. You see, they provide all the tools that make it easy to buy and sell cars online. Tools like VPP make it so there's no funny business when you're buying or selling your cars. You wanna know what's even cooler? Our very own James Pumphrey and Nolan Sykes have partnered with eBay to judge a first of its kind competition. Congratulations. <laughs> it's so beautiful. eBay Motors wants to see what cars you guys have to sell and James and Nolan will be judging their favorites from the bunch. Click the link in the description, download the eBay Motors app, upload some pics of the car, write up a fancy little description, bada bang, bada boom, you're entered into the competition. That is right, we will be judging the competition, picking our top two favorite cars that are listed to sell from September 7th to the 30th, and best of all, the winner will get a thousand dollar gift card to eBay, and second place, will get a five hundred dollar gift card. And the prize we are most excited about is the last place prize. We'll be picking the worst car listed, and that winner, or loser, will also win a $500 gift card to eBay. So what are you waiting for? The competition is live now and runs until September 30th. Go list those cars you got sitting around. Maybe you'll win, maybe you'll lose. We can't wait to see what's out there. Now, Jerry, back to the show. The Tesla Model 3 received the highest ever crash test rating from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, as well as the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. While the NHTSA is a government organization, the IIHS is a nonprofit organization that's funded and backed pretty much by every insurance company that you can probably think of. Both organizations test vehicles in a multitude of different crash scenarios. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to focus primarily on the IIHS. These days, there are two types of safety measurements that they analyze, which are passive safety and active safety. And passive safety has to do with how the car reacts in an event of a collision, and active safety is what you see in all the commercials that companies are putting out. And we'll get into active safety when we start talking about the Model 3 in a bit. But for passive safety, the IIHS has six main categories for testing the crashworthiness of a vehicle. And they include three different kinds of front end impacts, side impact, whiplash, which is a seat and seat belt test, and roof strength. The IIHS painstakingly monitors an insane amount of data and impact results for every single crash that happens inside their labs, and they test crashes anywhere between 12 and 40 miles per hour. And after the crash, they're given a rating. There are four ratings. There's poor, there's marginal, there's acceptable, and there's good, with good being the best that your car can get. Oh, you wanna be great? Well, too bad, because the best you can be is good. <laughs> and they use a warehouse full of computers during these tests, but the actual devices are just a variation of two different kinds of devices, accelerometers and load cells. Accelerometers measure acceleration forces, the change in velocity of an object. But with regards to the IIHS, they measure how quickly an object stops moving, meaning the duration of an impact. Now your phone probably has a bunch of them in it. It knows when you pick it up that you picked it up because it's got an accelerometer in there. It knows it went you from zero to some other speed. Now for the IIHS, duration of impact is a really important measurement of safety because the longer time an impact takes, the more energy gets absorbed and the less energy gets transferred to the driver and the passengers. 
good example of this is if we take a look at crashes in motorsports. Now crash where a car smacks into a wall, it comes to immediate stop. And that's a really bad crash because when the car smacks the wall, it's taking all that kinetic energy and it's going to zero and it's going to zero very, very quickly. Now, on the other hand, a really scary type of crash that you might think of is when a car is tumbling, but in fact, it's actually dispersing all those forces and extending the amount of time, which means that you as the passenger or the driver itself is getting less forces acted upon them and it's actually safer. You want to try to disperse that energy over a longer period of time. So that's all the stuff that accelerometers test. Now what about load cells? Load cells measure the amount of force that's exerted on them. Basically they're kind of like really high strength scales and in fact if you have a scale at your home you probably have a load cell or a number of load cells inside of it. Very simply, they take any force exerted on them and they convert it into a value that's quantifiable and that makes sense to us in everyday life. Like pounds if you live in America or kgs if you live in anywhere else in the world. So those are the basics of the kinds of devices that are used to measure force. But where the heck do they put them? Well, a lot of them are actually put on the car themselves, but a number of them go into something called an anthropomorphic testing device, much more commonly known as a crash test dummy. We are the dummies crashing our crew, busting our heads just for you. Inside one single dummy, there can be as many as a hundred individual measurement devices that are recording precisely how that dummy reacts to a crash. And there are all different kinds of dummy. They even have little baby ones called Krabbies, which spelled C-R-A-B-I, which stands for Child Restraint Airbag Interaction. And they are creepy. They should be called Creepies, which stands for Crashes Really Affect Everyone's Physical Inertia. Listen, I'm not very good at acronyms or jokes apparently, so what do you think creepy should stand for? Why don't you put it, put your best acronym in the comments. Keep it PG-13, because I'm a cool substitute teacher. <laughs> Fun little side note about crash test dummies. There was a guy in the 40s and 50s named Colonel John Stapp that was doing aeronautical safety testing for pilots. And the data used back then is still the baseline by which all crash test dummies are measured and calibrated. At one point, Colonel Stapp rocketed himself to 632 miles an hour. And then from that speed came to a dead stop in 1.4 seconds and during 43 G's. And the dude survived. What the? So let's talk about the Tesla Model 3, which received the highest ever ratings from the IIHS and the NHTSA. How in the heck did a car company that's younger than most of my t-shirts jump to the front of the line in automotive crash test safety? Well, it starts with the fact that the car doesn't have an engine. crumple zone is where the engine sits in a conventional front engine vehicle. Now with a combustion engine in there, there's less empty space to absorb any impact. The combustion engine is totally rigid, so there's really no energy absorption that happens from the actual engine in a front end collision. The crumple zone is all the space around the engine, and with the Model 3, there's basically nothing but air in the front of the car or your luggage, which I'm guessing is probably a little bit softer than a freaking engine. Anyways, that space provides a whole lot more space for the impact to be absorbed. So remember when we talked about impact times? Well, this was the first step in how Tesla got its world-class safety rating. Right, okay, so there's no combustion engine in the Model 3, which gives a whole lot of space for an impact to be absorbed. Likewise, because there's no gas tank, the same principle applies to the rear of the car. No container full of boom boom juice means that you don't need a bunch of rigid structures to protect the container, which ultimately means that you can dedicate that space to absorbing any sort of unforeseen impact. So the crumple zones on a car do a whole lot to try to absorb that energy from a crash, but they can't do it all. And eventually the energy from the car crash is going to make its way past the crumple zone. Well, the Tesla Model 3 is prepped and ready to handle it because of how Tesla builds out the frame of the car, starting with those A-pillars that we mentioned just a little bit ago. If you take a look at a Model 3's A-pillar, it is actually really, really thick, like 11 C's thick. And that's 
just the start of the Model 3's cabin structure. Now, the car's cabin structure is made up of the floor pan, the roof, the A pillars, the B pillars, the C pillars, and the rail. Now in the Model 3, the A pillars, the B pillars, and the rails are super robust. But Tesla also built in another cross member in the roof that one, allows for two enormous moon roofs to be fitted. And we'll get to those in a bit because they're actually pretty amazing. And two, it gives the entire car additional rigidity and strength. It's such a strong frame that the Model 3 can actually withstand up to four times its own weight on the roof. That's over 16,000 pounds just sitting on top of the car. Now, roof strength with regards to the IIHS is measured by strength to weight ratio, meaning that the resistance in pounds that the roof can take, its strength, compared to the curb weight of the car, that's its weight. Now, the Tesla Model 3 lands at a ratio of 5.847. To put this into perspective, We'd like to think of the Ford F-150, my truck, I got one, as a pretty freaking sturdy and strong vehicle. Well, the f 150s strength to weight ratio is 5.851, only four one thousandths better than the Model 3, which is a mid-sized family sedan. And the IIHS rounds up to the nearest hundredth, which means that these two vehicles, the F-150 and the Tesla Model 3, have the exact same score. But let's compare it to some of its actual competitors. The BMW w3 series scored a 5.73 the honda accord comes in at 5.51 and the volvo s3 synonymous with safety it comes in at 5.73 did i just blow your mind rhetorical question i know i did mind blown the model 3 also utilizes clever engineering around how they exactly manage all of the weight of the car. Despite being Tesla's smallest car, the Model 3 weighs between 3,500 and 4,100 pounds. That's more than two tons, so it's a heavy, heavy boy. And if we look at a couple of cars that I just mentioned, the BMW 3 Series, that clocks in at 3,500 pounds, and the Volvo S60, it tips the scales at 3,900 pounds. And in fact, if we look at just the roof strength and weight, the Model 3 is a lot closer to something like a Ford F1 50 than it is any car in its class. The battery in the dual motor setup alone weighs 1,400 pounds, but all of that battery and motor weight is positioned below the passengers, giving the car a ridiculously low center of gravity and, as a result, a ridiculously low probability of being rolled over in the event of a side impact collision. And this is characteristic of all Teslas. Even their Model X, their biggest model, which is similar in size to a Range Rover, for example, is very difficult to flip due to its super low center of gravity. You probably have seen the viral video of these guys trying to flip a Tesla Model X and they don't do it. And it would seem they're putting it in conditions that would make it pretty easy to flip over. If you did that in my car, I'd be rolling, baby. So the IIHS measures the probability of a Model 3 rollover at 6% chance. Now to put that in perspective, the Chevy Camaro, it has an 11% chance of flipping over in an accident. So how about them apples? Now the Model 3 also has a very low polar moment of inertia, or PMI. And PMI is a measure of how much force it takes to rotate an object around its center of mass. We actually went on a jerry bus trip and talked about this. I took a basketball and I took a broom pole and they weigh about the same mass. Well, taking a basketball and getting it to rotate around its center of mass is pretty easy. But when you have a broom pole and the mass is located further away from the center of mass, it's really hard to get that thing to rotate. That has a high polar moment of inertia versus a basketball's low polar moment of inertia. Now, because of the car's very low PMI, the Model 3 will easily spin out in a collision, turning a lot of that linear energy into rotational energy, thereby increasing the time of impact and decreasing the amount of energy to the passengers. Remember when we talked about motorsport crashes earlier? And while it looks a lot scarier, it's usually a lot safer when you're rolling and tumbling because you're getting all of that energy out in a longer period of time. This is essentially what's happening with a Tesla Model 3 when it gets hit and starts to spin. The Model 3 actually has the lowest PMI of any production vehicle currently available. <laughs>
Now the Model 3, much like a lot of Teslas, has a glass roof. Now this might seem like a point of weakness, but Tesla saw this as an opportunity to get real clever with their engineering. The glass roof of the Model 3 is made out of two pieces of tempered automotive glass, and it's bonded together by a layer of polyurethane, which is actually the same sort of material that skate wheels are made out of. Now this works in a really clever way with regards to impact absorption because of how tempered glass actually works. Let's talk about normal sheet metal roofs first. Now if an impact happens to, let's say, the side of the car, and it's a big old truck that hits the side, the roof, being made out of sheet metal, only really absorbs the impact at the point of impact. Now sheet metal is pretty easy to bend and reshape, which does help with absorption, but when we compare it with Tesla's tempered glass roof, there's really no contest. The roof on the Model 3 is engineered to distribute any critical impact from any point of the roof throughout the entire roof itself. So if we go back to our truck scenario, we can now think of that truck's impact being distributed throughout the entire roof, not just at a single point of impact. And that's the nature of tempered glass. So when tempered glass breaks, the entire sheet of glass breaks, not just where the impact occurred. That's probably pretty expensive if you break your roof in your Tesla. Now because it's distributed across the entire plane, it increases the time of impact and absorbs much more of that energy. And that works in tandem with the polyurethane bonding layer to maintain an overall structure so that none or very little of the glass from the roof of the car falls into the cabin during an accident. Don't want glass falling on you. Everything we've talked about so far is just in the event of an accident, which is super important, obviously. But the real shining star in the Model 3's trophy case is the active safety features. Now these days, most modern cars come with active safety features. I'm talking forward collision sensors and emergency braking that will stop the car, lane departure assist that will keep your car in its lane, blind spot detection sensors, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of cars already have that. Model 3 has all those as well, but what really sets it apart from its competitors is autopilot. May I suggest you put the car in the auto cruise mode for safety's sake? No, you may not. Sit back, relax, and let your robot on four wheels do all the driving for you because you got Instagram posts to like and look at and you know. Tesla has been testing and developing its autopilot system for years now, which has put it leaps and bounds ahead of other automakers in terms of how it measures, analyzes, and applies the data that the car is receiving from its multitude of sensors. Yes, their main goal with autopilot is obviously to build a system that allows the car to drive itself, but even if you're not actively using the autopilot system to autonomously drive the car, that pilot, he didn't check out, man. He's still there chilling with you. And it's like an extra set of eyes and brakes and steering wheel helping to keep you from crashing. And the system on these cars is so advanced that using its front facing radar system, it can actually bounce radar waves underneath the car directly in front of you to detect the car in front of it and it can detect the differences between both of their velocities if they're going to collide or not, sometimes before they even collide, enabling it to auto brake before the accident even happens. There's a really great video of this happening. This is with a Model S, but the 3 has the same technology. You can hear an alarm and see the car brake before the cars ahead of it even crash. They're like a crystal ball reader that's actually able to read the crystal ball and tell you. It's not hocus pocus. Okay, okay, all right, but what about the batteries. Now, a few years ago, it seemed like every other day you'd catch a news story about Tesla's catching on fire. And frankly, I think a lot of this is blown out of proportion by the media. Good old fashioned gas cars catch on fire every day, but it doesn't make the news cycle because it's not a new scary form of technology. From 2012 to 2019, there have been one Tesla catch on fire for every 175 million miles driven. Now to put that in perspective, in the US alone, there's a vehicle fire every 19 million miles driven. That's, that's data. So, all of these things combined, the Model 3 takes home an easy W from the IIHS and the NHTSA as their top safety pick. They're not, it's not great, it's not fantastic, it's 
the top, which is good. <laughs> also, just in case you were wondering, the second safest car is actually the Tesla Model S. Elon Musk is a crazy dude. He is extremely smart, but sometimes, you know, he's got a little Kanye West in him. What do you guys think about Elon Musk? Let me know in the comments. Follow us on Donut at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. Till next week.